This video is going to cover the basics of drip campaigns in active demand. Drip campaigns, or as they're known, nurture campaigns, is a campaign that is a personal journey for an individual. Unlike a newsletter campaign where you have a population of people, specific events are happening on very specific days, a drip campaign starts with an individual or prospect that meets some specific criteria, and then this starts a personal journey for the individual. To start a drip campaign in active demand, you browse to the campaign section of the product and you choose drip campaign on this top menu here. Now, like I was mentioning, the drip campaign starts with some type of action or trigger or some type of criteria that uh, indicates that the individual is ready for a personal journey. So for example, the individual could have filled out a form or it's the case they could have been added to a specific audience or removed from an audience or they made a call, booked an appointment, uh, followed you on Twitter. Any of these types of things that happen can be used to trigger a personal journey, a timed sequence of actions and responses. This list of options here are really the starting step or the beginning of the journey. This is, for example, the person has filled out a specific form. That will be the starting step for their personal journey. The contact signal option, this is really the gen a generic query where you can isolate any of the contact histories that active demand is collecting on individuals. Today's video is going to focus on an audience-based drip campaign. So if I choose this, I can walk through a wizard. It will build the first email. It'll give me the ability to select the specific audience or any of other items that I are required to build my campaign. But I'm just going to select this and then I'll jump right to a campaign that I've already built. Once you've created your campaign, you'll be presented with the campaign overview screen. And this is similar to the other campaigns, but there's definitely some unique capabilities in a personal journey or drip campaign. So if you've watched the Anatomy of a Nurture campaign video on our YouTube site, you'll know the first thing you want to consider in a drip campaign is what are the entrance conditions of the campaign. And that was really set in broad strokes with the starting step choice you made uh, in the previous part of the video. Then you can, of course, isolate this. If it was a form submit, you're going to say it is exactly this form or these forms. Uh, but in the case of this video, we're going to be talking about an audience. And the audience has a custom set of filters, custom ability to narrow down what segment defines the audience, etc. So that's really going to wrap up your entrance conditions for the campaign. So the next thing you're going to want to determine is what are you trying to get the prospect to do with this campaign? And that is really uh, handled in the workflow, which is a series of actions and responses, and the definition of the goals. So the goals are the explicit uh, actions that we're trying to get this prospect to take as a result of entering this campaign. Finally, what you want to define is how does a person leave this campaign? And the first thing, of course, if they did what we want them to do, then out they go. We want them out of the campaign. And there's other uh, ways a prospect can leave the campaign. One is they uh, decide they don't want to get emails from you or what have you, and they opt out. Another way is that maybe you're deciding to pull them out of the campaign by removing them from the source audience uh, list in the case of this audience campaign. Finally, they can just fall out of the campaign because they took a route which ended up that there was nothing beyond that step and hence they fall out of the campaign. So this specific campaign in this demonstration, really what we're trying to do is we have a recent customer, somebody you just purchased, we're going to try to get them to post a positive review on social media if they're happy. If they're unhappy, we really don't want them anywhere near social media. So this campaign is going to ask the prospect, one is thank them for the purchase, and then we're going to try to move them to a pre-survey page, which is really just a landing page with a mini survey on it. So they're either happy or unhappy with their engagement with their company.
And this form has an autoresponder so that if they're happy, we're going to send them off to social media. If they're unhappy, of course, we're just going to send them off to customer care. So the autoresponder here, really, if they're happy, we're going to send them, like I mentioned, we're going to be sending an email. Thanks for your feedback. This is what you said. Please share your results on the social media platforms. If you're unhappy, of course, we're going to say the same thing. Thank you for your feedback, but we're not going to mention anything to, about social media in the response. So if we look at this campaign, it's an audience-based campaign. So really, it is membership in this audience that's going to be the trigger to pull them in to the campaign. So with audience-based campaigns, really, you have to select the list. So if you see this list, it already has people in the list. There's 32 people that are currently well, happy customers, we hope. And really, the trigger is them being added to this audience to bring them into the campaign. So if I just save this campaign, activate the campaign, it'll be the next person who's added to this list that will trigger their entrance into this journey. Now, if we want to actually process the existing people in the campaign, if I activate this campaign, you see the campaign has identified that there are 32 people in the audience that haven't been processed yet. So if I activate the campaign, none of those people are going to be brought into the campaign, but Active Demand will present a button here that will give you the option to process the people in the campaign. I'll just show you what that looks like. So that's what you'll see here. So if I click this button, the people who are already in the list will get pulled into the campaign and they will get processed. Then Active Demand will wait. The next person that's added to the audience is going to be pulled in to this campaign. So while I'm on the screen here, I could have a suppression list defined. So with a suppression list, this is really, you know, I... Uh, it's really just like in any other campaign in Active Demand, I can define a list of people that I do not want to be pulled into this campaign, and that's the suppression list. And there's as well a goal completion list here. So any of the people that complete these goals, just like any campaign in Active Demand, they're going to be put into this goal completion list. Um, but you see there's some additional options here in the drip campaign, and it really helps you define entrance and exit conditions of the campaign. So, for example, only process contacts that have opted in through the active demand opt-in system. So if somebody's added to the list and they didn't opt in, they're not going to be processed by this campaign if I check this checkbox. And as, as far as exit conditions go, if the person does what we want them to do, if I check this checkbox, like you see here, it will remove them from the campaign. This is a very important one for drip campaigns as well, is how often will you allow somebody to walk through this campaign? And as you see here, I have only allow the person to go through once. That means if they're removed from the audience, added back to the audience at some later date, they will not get processed by this campaign if they've already been through once. And finally, stop processing prospects when they leave the source list. So if the happy customers list that I showed you earlier, if the prospect leaves that list, if I remove them from that list, because let's say I know they're not a happy customer, then they will stop being processed immediately in this campaign. And what I mean immediately, if there's currently an email being sent, clearly it's not going to stop the email send. But if they're in a wait state uh, and it's a case that uh, you uh, pull them from the source list, then it's a case you'll actually have this person will leave the campaign. So very important part of the product here is really refining your entrance and exit conditions on the drip campaign. Now, this specific campaign, like I said, is an audience-based campaign. And what we're going to do is after they've been added to the list, we're going to wait for two days, and then we're going to start the process. So just like all workflows in Active Demand, there's really decisions and actions. And there's another video that gets into the details of these specific uh, parts of a workflow. And I'll try to highlight some of the things to consider when you're actually building workflow workflows in active demand in a drip campaign. So 
this campaign, like I said, they're going to be added to the audience. We're going to send them an email, and the email is going to be uh, saying, hey, thanks for buying. Please leave feedback. Now, we're going to wait for five days, and if the prospect is still in the campaign five days later, we're going to send them an email from the salesperson, and it'll look like he forwarded the last email and say, hey, you know, this is very important to us. Uh, please give us feedback. And then we're going to wait another week. And if it's a case that this person still hasn't left the campaign, then it's a case we're going to send them one final email and it's going to say, thank you. Uh, no, please give us feedback. It's very important. But if it's, if it's too much effort, we're going to stop bothering you. And it's, it's at this point that the person leaves the campaign because there's no other action. He can still go complete the goal by clicking this link, but for all intents and purposes, he is left or he or she has left this campaign because he's now moving beyond this specific action. There's no wait. This is an immediate action. He takes this action and off he goes. Now, I kept mentioning that, well, if the person's still in the campaign at this point, then we'll proceed. So how did he get out of here if it's a case that, uh, you know, he, what's, how could he have left this campaign? And like I said before, in the overview screen, we have set here that if the person has completed the goal, then it's the case that we'll stop processing them. So really, a person in the campaign, they're either in a wait state or there's an action that's being taken and then they're into a wait state. So actions happen very quickly. So an action, for example, I've waited here for two, uh, two days. This action is immediate, so to speak. This, uh, so somebody is never in this state uh, for a measurable period of time, right? So it's a case that they wait, we send them an email. So what, really to uh, highlight this, uh, the temporary nature of an action, if I were to say, send an email, and then put in a decision, did the person open the email? And if they did open the email, proceed. And if they didn't go into the email, I want to add them to a specific list. The reality is everybody who's here gets this email is immediate. This check is immediate. Therefore, absolutely, it will only go one route, and that is this way here, and they will be added to the list. And if I didn't have this action here, this person would exit the campaign right here because there is only a yes wire, not a no wire. So every decision has two routes. One is yes, one is no. And if there's no uh, false direction to take, the person will leave the campaign at this, this point. So if you're trying to check things like email open, make sure that you have a, a wait in the decision. So there's multiple. You could have put, for example, a wait action right here, wait for a couple of days, see if they've opened the email, see if, it, see if they've opened the email. If they did, off they go is this way. If they didn't, then you can take some other direction here. So really I'm going through some of the mechanics of the workflow. So really, again, the, the workflow is going to be um, uh, actions and decisions. A decision, if you look at the reference of the workflow uh, guide, uh, a decision has the two paths, positive and negative, and an action has only a gray wire. So sometimes this hangs up people. People think, gee, this is a gray wire. It's not going to happen. This one's a green wire. It is going to happen. No, it's the case that a uh, the green wire indicates, yes, this happened. A red wire indicates, no, it did not happen. Whereas the gray wire just says, yes, the action's taken. This is just transitor, tra uh, in transit. So it's a case that, uh, that we wait, we email, off we go to the next wait, off we go to the email open. Did they do it? Yes. Did they not? It goes this way. 
So it's really important to understand the tempo of the campaign, and the tempo is interrupted with these wait states. And you can always measure where or see where a person is in the reporting. So I would always name the wait states because this really defines where the person is in the campaign. So uh, we could say here, you know, uh, second wait. So if I go into the reporting, I'll be able to say, see all of the people who are currently sitting in the second wait of the campaign. And this one we would call maybe the, uh, the third wait, et cetera. So really the idea is you wanna be able to see where people are in the campaign and that's handled in the reporting. So that's really uh, the basics of it is that you have some type of a starting step, you start through the process and uh, you can re uh, watch the video of Anatomy of a Drip Campaign to look at strategies, but uh, really what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the mechanics of the Drip Campaign container. Now it's important to have uh, uh, assets in the campaign, built in the campaign, for example, this, white, this uh, landing page. Now building the landing page in the campaign allows you to have a reusable uh, asset, which is the campaign. So if I wanted to, for example, make another drip campaign that's similar to this, if the landing page was not in the campaign, I would have to clone the campaign and then clone the campaign as well as the landing page. And if you build the landing page inside the campaign, you can use campaign variables depending on the campaign, the account type that you have. If you have campaign variables accessible to you, then you can abstract some of the content and you can build multiple drip campaigns with different audiences, that type of stuff, and just change the content inside the campaign. So, but really the benefit of containing your assets in the campaign itself, whether it's a drip campaign or a newsletter campaign, the benefit is really reuse of the effort. So that concludes the basics of a drip campaign video. And hopefully in this video, you see it's very easy to set up a campaign. Of course, each of the starting steps provide uh, unique capabilities of the platform. But uh, this audience campaign we see used a lot and this specific campaign, if you're interested in it, let support know they'll definitely clone this campaign into your account. This concludes the video on getting started with drip campaigns with active demand.